the Creator has enlisted us with this jurisdiction, and we existed way before the settlers. They never mentioned that they they ceded the land that we live in today. It still belongs to the Agmatang First Nation and the rest of and the rest of the people in that in that treaty number nine. We got a lot of history. We got a lot of documentations, written documents in our community that says that the treaty was not done right. You know, right at the outset, the foreign governments took what they wanted, which is the land and the resources. They knew our ancestors would never agree with this due to, the, due to our languages, laws, and worldview. It was impossible for our ancestors to conceive of such an idea. Jurisdiction cannot be brought, bought, or sold. Understand that. The Crown says our ancestors agreed on this, but the evidence shows that the seat, release, and surrender clause in the treaty was never explained. Moving forward, we need to get the Crown and the First Nation to work together to determine how decisions are to be made in our territories. My question, Speaker, is will Ontario recognize that it has abused the treaty promises and continued efforts by the Premier to bulldoze the North will lead to conflict and stall any real partnerships? Will Ontario commit to negotiating in good faith that the First Nations and Canada to develop a new decision-making regime for the North that can actually encourage some development by ensuring First Nations have real authority to say yes or no to major developments in their homelands. Treaty 9 First Nation and their law firm are here to announce their legal case to end unilateral Crown decision. For years, they have been ignored, denied their decisional making rights, and, they have, and they've had enough. It is imperative that this government to respect Treaty 9 and start working with and alongside First Nation to ensure growth and prosperity like the rest of the province. To the Premier, will this government ensure pre-informed consent for equal opportunity and collaboration at the decision-making level going forward with all First Nations. Wake up, Premier. These First Nations are suing your government. I ask again, will this government respect First Nations' rights and get consent? I don't think that the Ontario and Canadian governments have understood what's hit them this morning, which is we're saying they cannot unilaterally make decisions anymore, period, full stop. That there needs to be, here's the legislature, there's going to be another, if you will, legislature. And that laws and policies and decisions about what happens in Treaty 9 territory, which is two thirds of Ontario, will not happen until they pass both. If this government and the federal government don't realize the gig is up, then, and they don't sit down and work out an actual co-jurisdiction governance regime with the First Nations that will keep going through the court because it may take more than 10 years to get to trial. In the meantime, we may be forced to bring injunctions to stop unilateral development. This government is always saying that this uh, Northern Ontario is open for business and that's without uh, our uh, you know, with our consent. I think uh, as rights holders, as land rights holders, as tree rights holders, we got to come together and protect uh, our lands, protect our ways of life, protect the, uh, the plants and the animals that are in our traditional territories. And it's important that we come together uh, as nations, as, uh, as people, and start rising as people. And, um, and I think this is a, a starting point. Well, we just continue to fight as this continue to make noise, continue to educate our people and the public, that someday the public may start to understand and support our positions. 
if they know enough what we are going through in our communities. And the only way that we're going to get this is if we have our own sovereignty and jurisdiction to determine the, what we want in our life in order to succeed in our communities. When you look at the, uh, the treaty, the Royal Treaty, it starts by uh, understanding truth, trust, and honesty. But that did not happen. And uh, the Royal Treaty, I think, was there are some records, documents that were said that did not happen right from the beginning. But we have decided as, as a communities to take, a, take the Ontario court and set it straight and uh, to stop making decisions on your own without our consent in regards to mining or any other development. The Edmonton First Nation, I think, uh, put together a paper that, uh, that states that we need to be equal partners, equal decision makers in what happens in our traditional territory. In doing what we're doing today with other nine First Nations, I think our voices are going to be strong and we're going to send a message out to the general public that they know what's going on. I think uh, what I heard today from uh, talking to other chiefs, he says we're going we're gonna to have to keep our course straight and stay firm and have that uh, and get more people to join in, in this case. Because if we don't do anything now, things are going to not work well for our First Nations.